Hey guys, it's John here. Welcome back to the channel where we explore the microcosmos of sea monkeys and other instant pets. I have another rare sea monkey item to unbox and review for today's video, which I'm always super excited about. This one you've probably not heard of before though. It's called the Sea Monkey's Baby Nursery. It was released by Transcience in 2006 and features a small plastic dish shaped aquarium. This is quite a unique sea monkey product as it's the only tank they ever released which was intended to be used exclusively for babies rather than as a permanent home for your colony. Its aim was to fix a common problem experienced by sea monkey owners, the high mortality rate of newly born babies. You see, raising the first generation of sea monkeys in an empty tank isn't too difficult if you have the right water parameters, but it's the subsequent generations which can be a little more challenging. New babies are often seen swimming around in the tank, but then the majority of them seemingly disappear after just a few days. There can be multiple causes for this, but the most common is that they are competed for resources by the much bigger adults. So the easy solution is to simply move the babies into a nursery tank for a few weeks, where they can get plenty of food and grow large enough so that when you put them back into their main tank, they'll be capable of competing with the other adults. It's a method that actually works really well, without requiring too much extra effort. I really like the artwork on the packaging here. The top left corner says, The Amazing Life Sea Monkeys in the New Baby Nursery. This item wasn't sold for a particularly long time though, so I never got a refresh without this tagline saying that it was a brand new product. I do appreciate the baby blue and pink lettering they've used here though, it's a nice touch. The illustrations on the packaging are really wholesome, and probably my favourite part of the whole kit. There's a sea monkey family peering through a window into a nursery with 9 babies lying in their little cots. I assume all of these have probably come from the same mother, considering female brine shrimp are known to birth several babies at the same time. The bottom of the packaging features the tank itself. To be honest, it looks like it's probably quite cheap, but we'll get a proper look when I open it up. There's also the three standard packets in here needed to start a sea monkey colony, and the older style plastic feeding spoon. The back of the packaging gives us a little more information about what this product is for. It says that moving them into this tank gives the babies lots of oxygen, light, and a giant playground, and that they're best viewed by looking in from the sides of this new tank. When they're 14 days old, you can introduce them to your other sea monkeys. The information is also given here in French and Spanish, and on the right hand side are some more general instructions for how to start a sea monkey colony using the three included packets. While researching this item, I did come across another packaging variant which I think is probably a precursor to the one I have here. They're very similar, but there are a couple of minor differences. The first is that this red star shaped graphic is missing, which tells you the contents of this kit. My guess is that they probably added this in later, because it's not particularly obvious that the tank is actually included in here, as it looks the same as the packaging plastic. The other difference is the way the three packets are displayed. In the original version they're completely flat, but in this updated variant, a small piece of plastic has been added in, so they can be displayed at an angle, which I definitely think looks a little better. This baby nursery has been patiently sitting in its packaging for 16 years, so I think it's about time we open it up and take a look inside. Those of you who have seen my other unboxing and review videos will know that I'm not really a collector of vintage sea monkey items. Instead I just get them so I can make these videos for you guys. So to all the proper collectors out there, I know this probably isn't too easy to watch, but at least you now get the chance to see how these products work. There's a simple set of instructions in here. They're just the generic ones that give you an outline of how to start your sea monkeys using the three packets. Todd Machen, who's currently doing the official illustrations for Train Science, has recently done an updated version of this, which you'll start seeing in the newer Sea Monkey kit soon. I quite liked the temperature indicator chart on here, because I think it's a helpful hatching guide. Having your tank water too cold seems to be one of the main areas where many beginners go wrong, so I think it's quite important to be aware of how warmer temperatures can help your Sea Monkeys out. The three packets in here are in surprisingly good condition. Even though they've been sitting in the packaging for 16 years, it doesn't seem like they've absorbed any moisture. When I shake them, you can still hear the salts inside, which is a really great sign. Now in the past, I have tried hatching old packets from other vintage sea monkey tanks I've unboxed, but I've never had any luck with them. I've got a good feeling about these ones though, so I'll give it a shot towards the end of this video. And here's the tank itself. They call it an aquarium on the packaging, but really that's a bit of a stretch. I've had takeout dinners that come in sturdier plastic than this. You can see how easy it is for me to bend the sides. It's basically a disposable plastic tray with a lid that sits on top. The shape is flatter than what I'm used to with other sea monkey tanks. I guess that's probably because it's been designed as a nursery rather than as a tank for viewing your sea monkeys. This shape is also less likely to tip over, since the tank doesn't have a solid base. There's a sticker on the side here with a water fill line, so that's helpful, and the lid fits on surprisingly snugly, so the design isn't all bad. The air holes to allow air circulation are a nice addition too. Overall it's quite clear that saving costs was the primary objective with this tank, but it does kind of cheapen the brand a little bit when the quality is this poor. 
That being said, it's quite ironic that because this Sea Monkey tank is one of the rarest you can get, it's probably also one of the most highly sought after by collectors. So let's see now if I can get these 16 year old eggs to hatch. It would be pretty incredible if it works after so long, but I'm feeling hopeful. I'll start by filling the tank with distilled water. The packaging says this tank holds 300 mils, which is about the same as a standard ocean zoo tank. So this fill line should indicate the perfect amount of water. I always use distilled water with my sea monkey tanks, because it has the least impurities in it. It's always worked really well for me too, so that's why I stick with it. Next I'll add in packet number 1, the water purifier. Despite what the name says, it's this packet that has most of the sea monkey eggs, so I always make sure to get all of it emptied into my tank. Next up is the second packet, the instant live sea monkey eggs. I've had a look at the contents of this sachet under the microscope a few weeks ago, and I couldn't actually see any eggs in here. To me it looked mostly like salt with some small bits of green and orange food particles mixed in. I think that's part of the reason why the instructions say you don't need to feed them for the first 5 days after they've hatched, because without realising, you've actually already given them some food. It's important to dissolve all of these salts. I like using the Aqualish pipette for this, because it's a great tool for mixing the water up really well. To those of you who haven't seen it yet, the official Sea Monkey website recently listed a new product in their shop. It's a vintage style starter kit that has the first printed copy of Todd's new illustrated instruction manual, but they've also included an aqua leash with an airstone in there too, which is really great to see. If I can find a way of getting one of these shipped to New Zealand, I'll do an unboxing and review for you guys sometime later this year. Okay, so now that the setup is all done, all we have to do is wait 24 hours or so. It's winter here at the moment, so using a heat source for this tank is quite important. Sea monkeys hatch and grow the fastest at about 26 degrees Celsius, which is 79 Fahrenheit. So I'll leave them on this heat mat with some of my other tanks. The purple grow lights will help to promote the growth of cyanobacteria in their tank too, which will provide an additional food source for them, if they hatch. I'll check back in with you guys in a day or two from now, for an update on how things are going. Hey guys, so it's been about 48 hours since I set up this tank, so let's have a look to see if we can spot any babies. They're attracted to light when they first hatch, so putting a strong light source to one side of your tank can make it easier to spot them. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's anything moving about in here right now. It can sometimes take a few weeks for them to hatch though, and when I had a look at one of the eggs under the microscope, I could see that it appeared to be cracking open, so I'll leave this tank on their heat mat for another week or two, just in case some of these babies are a little slow to come out. So, what are my overall thoughts on this kit? There's no hiding from the fact that the quality of the tank is very poor, but at the same time, I guess it's all that's really necessary for a sea monkey nursery, so it still does the job. It just would have been nice to see something more sturdy, similar to the Ocean Zoo tank. One strange omission from this kit is a simple pipette or aqua leash. A tool like this is necessary to move sea monkeys between tanks, so it's really unusual that they left it out. But at the same time, it's easy to see that there was a strong emphasis on keeping costs as low as possible for this kit. I imagine it wasn't easy selling products like these. The Baby Nursery, Sea Monkey Watch, and the Sea Monkey Speedway are all similar in that their potential demographic of customers is rather small. The only people who would consider purchasing them are those that already have a well established colony of sea monkeys so it's not much of a surprise that this kit wasn't on shelves for too long. I do love the idea though, and it keeps in line with Trans Science's ethos of taking a simple concept and embellishing it through brilliant marketing. Regardless of the execution of this product, the idea of using a nursery tank for your sea monkey colony is actually really sound, so encouraging people to set one up is a smart idea. I'd love to see an updated version of this from Trans Science at some point in the future, though perhaps with a nicer tank and the inclusion of an aqua leash pipette next time. Before we finish up, I'd also like to say a big thank you to my friend Todd Machen for donating this item to the channel for today's video. Todd's a sea monkey collector, but also an incredibly talented artist. As I mentioned earlier, he currently does the official illustrations for Trans Science, so if you've picked up some of the newer sea monkey products, like this ocean treasure tank, you've likely already seen some of his amazing artwork. If you're interested in knowing more about the history of sea monkeys, and some insight into their future products, I highly recommend checking him out on Instagram. So thanks again for your generosity Todd. This video wouldn't have been possible without you. Thanks for coming with me today on this special neonatal journey into the microcosmos of sea monkeys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. To those of you interested in getting a sea monkey kit of your own, I've put an Amazon link down in the description with a bunch of affordable tank options and some great accessories that will help you raise a colony of healthy childbearing sea monkeys. I'm always happy to answer your sea monkey related questions too, so you're welcome to ask those down in the comment section below. I have a few more of these rarer sea monkey tanks that I'd like to make videos on, so let me know what you want to see next, the Explorer Sub or Seafire Ocean of Fun Kit, and I'll catch you in the next one.